and some camera equipment. Over here, um, son of a whatever. Here, flip that down like that. All right, we made it. Here's where we're, hey, Cam, Cam, get the camera up. I'm up here. All right, cut to B-roll. Well, I'm finally doing it. What am I doing? I've been asked for years to do a video shop tour, so here we go. And why is it taking so long? Well, I was waiting for the perfect time because everything seems to be in a constant state of flux. Things changing and moving and coming and going. Then one day it hit me, there's never gonna be a perfect time. There's never a perfectly calming balance and completeness. The evolving continues to evolve every day. The best I can do is take a snapshot in time and present it, quote, as is. So this video will be our as is snapshot. Also to note, this video will be different than my normal videos. I'm gonna walk around all over the place and show you everything. And to get this out of the way so I don't have to constantly say, link in the description. I'll just say it right now. There will be tons of links and resources for whatever I show and use every day in the video description below. Before this whole racket got too serious, while I was working in the dreaded corporate world, I spent my leather hobby time at the kitchen table down in the dining room for the first year. Then I migrated out to the back deck, which is outside in a screened in porch, just simply to get out of my wife's hair, really, to be honest with you. And yes, there were vast temperature fluctuations out there, up to 105 degrees in the summer, below 10 degrees in the winter. And yes, everything that was liquid, like dyes, glues, etc., would freeze. It was then one day when Zach said, why don't you just move your whole leather working space back inside and up in the loft at the top of the stairs? And that was pretty genius. So I did. By the way, uh, I am going to show a mind-blowing, it's not really a secret, but something that I've been asked thousands of times over the years. I'm going to show you that toward the end, but i got to wait to the end because there's parts that go to it that I've got to show before it. So stick around. No idea what those two chairs are for. And right here is the loft area that I mentioned. I used to be in this area right here, where now I'm over there. But we'll get to that in a second. And I have leather all over the place, as you can see, wherever, pretty much any room we go into, you're gonna see something of this nature. Before we head in here, let's go whoop, over here. Hold on. In progress, that shelf needs to be in there where that bike is. This is when I don't have time to go, that is not a dead body, I promise. I don't have time to go downstairs and I need to lay down for a minute. Bam. Backdrop boards for photos. Bike. There's a sewing machine down here somewhere, but I've never used it. Junk. Uh, more leather. And in the closet, more leather. Most of this is Horween Chromexel. Some more leather there. And then on this wall, this whole wall's done. This is all my black and blue leathers on this wall. And I get a lot of people ask me about these racks that I made. They're simple two by fours, hooks, electrical metal conduit that I cut to length. Didn't take much at all. About an hour to make each one. All right, let's, let's roll. Oh, real quick, before I forget, I'm sure I'll get asked if you haven't seen any of the other videos, where am I geographically in the world? I'm in Williamsburg, Virginia, and this footage you're looking at here was done by WHRO. They came and did a documentary, which is also on my channel, so Kenny Hopkins produced that and with some great, great footage. Back to here. Hold on, hold on. Let's go back. See this window? Uh, everyone asks what this window is all about here in the middle of the house. 
Uh, I'll explain that at the end of the video. I actually built this house. Yes, I laid every one of those brick. And I will explain why I put that window in that wall. Oh, there's Chloe. Hey, Chloe. Let's get back in here. Okay, we can just start here on the left and then loop around. This is an apron I made for my son, Mason, who's a blacksmith. Leather. I got a rack here, a rack there, and a rack there. And these three racks are somewhat organized. This is all Horween Dublin, and it's the English tan, the old English, and that's it. So these are my browns, lighter browns. Over here, these are Horween Dublin also, but nut brown, which is just a darker brown, dark guest brown, and then my black Dublins down here. Now over here are my sort of oddities, a lot of Dublin and some veg tan here. But these are what I use almost all the time. So these are easy access in the studio. Back over here, get this door out of the way. You're gonna see stuff like this all over the place for photography. These things, these contraptions here, I will explain those a little bit later. Uh, there's a lot of tools, leather, junk. I do a lot of building stuff that's not leather. So some of those tools are in here, more photography stuff. Got the Cobra Skyver from Leather Machine Company. Wonderful, this thing is a lifesaver. I uh, got an AC unit in here just in case. Well, I use it all the time. This is Abigail when I don't have a regular model. Uh, she fills in. The Arbor Press uses for all of my stamping. And the Mascon and ZB Anvil sits right there on top. Awesome, awesome. Ha! I said I wasn't gonna ramble on about links, but real quick, the Mascon and ZB tools, since I just mentioned the anvil, uh, there's a link in the description. We have these tools all available. The Master Series, the square, the centering ruler, pattern weights, these come in brass and steel, our bump jigs, brass and aluminum, our nesting arcs, brass and aluminum. These are awesome for designing. And, and then we have our uh, leather ruffers, these are made by my sons, uh, Nick and Mason, depending on who's available, what style they're doing. And then of course we have the anvils. Back to the show. All right, these cabinets, I got three of these cabinets with the drawers. This cabinet is all of my patterns that are not wallets. And they're all in envelopes. This is some tools and paraphernalia, some of the scrap leather. This, this toolbox is closest to where I sit. So this has most of what I use often. Stamps, stamps, etc., 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 etc. Leather stamping tools, which Yes, I actually do veg stamps and tooling. Not often, but when I do, I'm ready. Uh, these are the tools that I don't use hardly ever. Some copper rivet. These are all my clip, well, not all of them, but some of them. Clippings. Uh, my son, Mason, he's a blacksmith. He made that. Here are all of my wallet patterns and all firemen grab this sucker before anything. So every single wallet pattern I have is in here. Uh, these two boxes are watch boxes. Uh, you probably know I like watches a lot and I use them in my photography. And so, so two cabinets here, just dies and Consumables, I guess they're called. Glue, gloves. My dad's trial. 
It, uh, do we need to go through all these? I don't know what's in there, just junk. Let's wrap up this side of the room. Long rulers, some of my bags, some cases for hardware. These are stackable, but they also stay together. And then, speaking of hardware, these are also stackable and mobile. I like I like things on wheels. These are you know, hardware stuff. And it moves. Okay, let's go over here. My mobile cart. I can get this out of the way easy because it moves. And I can get it out of this video easy because I did a whole video on this whole cart. The eight ton clicker press. This is from Weaver. They gave me this and I really, really, really appreciate it. Helps click out pattern pieces and and when you have really big dies, this also can put die impressions in your leather. Uh, I'll explain that later. This is Chloe on a typical work day. This is her bed, this is her pillow, and this is her. Good job, Chloe. These are the Weaver Little Wonder presses. Which they handle. I took the tag off of this one, left it on that one. This is for snaps and grommets. And they have a whole bunch of different dies that go on the top and the bottom. Uh, I get two, that way when I'm doing snaps, one's set up to do the bottom and the other one's set up to do the top or vice, vice versa. So I can't remember, that's why I need two. I really would appreciate it, it does help the channel. All right, let's get into this workbench. I made this workbench. It is eight foot by four foot with one solid Alvin self-healing cutting mat on the top. It's all two by fours. I don't know if you can see under there. Two by fours braced all over. This is a trash can I made where I can just sweep stuff off the top and it dumps into the hole and down into the bucket. And I have electrical outlets all the way around the table and they all go up under the, the cords go up under the top. That is one of the original signs for my grandfather's construction business back in the 60s and 70s. And you can see where I got the name for my leather business right there. And that is me and the woman who lives in my house. That's Lily. Over to the admin and workstation, which is right across from, I could just swivel. I've moved the chair out of the way. Swivel around and do whatever I have to do. Some, the order book, order cards, etc., etc. blah, 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 blah. Okay, now this is sort of the packing table. And you'll see these two tables I have up on risers. This way I don't have to bend down so far, but I do all my packing up here. This is all my packing paraphernalia, boxes. Uh, right here, I got a little cabinet with more packing, packing stuff. Uh, some camera stuff that doesn't belong here that goes over there. I have another mobile cart here, which is a hot mess. And I wheel this out when I'm doing videos, but this one doesn't count. This is my photography table with some lights. I can move around and flip on, flip off. Speaking of packing, I do keep my boxes and whatnot up in here, extra. And then over here we have photo props, pretty much all for photos. I haven't been down here in about three years. I don't even know what's down there, except for I do see some rope. So I do know there's rope there. My grandmother owned a antique store in the 70s and 80s. So I have a lot of vintage stuff for photos. While we're over here, 
I call this the procrastination station because this is where I procrastinate. Right there, right there. TV here, some PlayStation games, and the elephant in the room or cow. This is from Skull Bliss. Beautiful. And they sent me another one, which I have over our mystery window right there. Wife's artwork. Wife's artwork. Uh, over here, I keep my stitching ponies that I made. I use this one all the time from Romanoff Tools, but all of them are, except for that was my original one. These three are set up for me to sit in a chair with my feet like pedals, which yes, I do have a video on these. And of course, the most comfortable chair in the world, the Eames. The hair on hides, I've got four of them. Two of them are in here, one on the floor, one on the wall, are from iCowHide.com. Oh, I forgot, for uh, the measurement geeks out there, this space is about 27 foot long by about 15 feet wide. So we're looking at no. 400 square feet. This shelf, uh, watch boxes, some leather stuff, leather stuff. Bunch of stuff made out of leather that's not wallets over here or extras, more leather stuff, some mouse pads and junk and a watch roll and a watch roll. Here is every single prototype wallet. And I did a video on all, I think there's 67 of these. Go see that video and look at each. These are number one prototype. And whenever I make these again, I pull out the prototype, put it on the desk, work worktop, so I have it as reference. Ah, Olivia. Olivia, the story, you either know Olivia or you don't know. And if you've seen my videos, then you know. And if you don't know, then go watch some past videos. She helps occasionally. All right, let's go over here to this cabinet. I uh, got some magazines for reference, and I'm in a, in a few of these magazines. Huh. There's me on the cover of that magazine, and uh, I, was in, I was in that magazine. I was in that magazine. That, But all these people, they did a really, really good job when they wrote these articles, and I'm very, very impressed with them. All right, so now what's in here? Let's see what's in here. These are dies for the press, for the wallets, and I've got the name of the wallet here. Get over there. Macbeth, McQueen, Tennyson, Heller, Brando, Tiny Tim, Santiago, Rooney, Charlie, Atticus, and some more of the bigger ones down here and some hamlets in there and then more junk some leather stuff and etc etc okay are you ready to have your mind blown i told you i was going to tell you about these this is actually made for scrapbooking and crafting here let me show you hold on scrapbooking and paper and then here's some of the dies that I showed you. So the way this works is, these are some of my old. This is spaced perfectly with these dies. So you put that there, there's foam on the top, put your leather on there, put that on there, and then feed it through. And it cuts, these are metal blades embedded in this wood, and it cuts out the leather and the shapes. I have to have all these custom made. Then you get some bigger ones and you can see the blades coming through the wood. The bigger ones, there are bigger sheets. When I transitioned over to the eight ton clicker press, this does the exact same thing that these do, but this is really expensive. So now what I do is I just take one of those and press into that. So when these get worn out, as you can see, a worn and a not worn, let me see if we can get this on camera. But these are 10 bucks and they last thousands and thousands of cuts. 
There's a brand new one, and there's a 5,000 cut. Oh yeah, back to these. These are on wheels. I made these for uh, YouTube filming. Hold on and I'll show you. So this is what they look like up on the workbench when I'm filming. And I do all of my filming with remote access here to the iPad. That's my video editing software, LumaFusion right there. But I know a lot of y'all have asked about my editing in the software I use, the LumaFusion that I just mentioned. For my camera, I use the iPhone and then I airdrop all the clips to the iPad and then I import them into the LumaFusion. This is it, this is what it looks like. This is a screen grab off my iPad. So I do all of it on the iPad and I'm not gonna go into depth how to use it, obviously. There's plenty of YouTubes out there, but this is it. And you can see hundreds and hundreds of clips, cuts, Audio's on the bottom in the green, the video's on the top in the blue. Drop them, clip them, cut them. My main goal is to save you time when you're watching my videos so you don't have to sit through too much of lag. So that's what all of this is all about. And why does it take 50 to 60 hours to make a 10, 15 minute video or 20 minute video? Well, this is why. So these both roll around and let me show you that one first and ironically, I'll use this one, the top of this one, to mount the camera to film this one. All right, so here's the first one. And these are just monitor arms that are supposed to mount monitors on the walls with this bottom arm I have here. This holds that while I'm filming. And then I can move this wherever I need to put it. And then I've got this, this arm here. that in here for a bendable arm for a light tripod mount or whatever that goes up there so there's that one let's look at this one all right this one could be kind of hard to film because i usually have the camera on this one but i'm holding the camera so there's weights on the bottom so i can move it anywhere around the table camera mounts in here i can articulate this arm and move anywhere around the table. So that way I can get different angles for everyone. So if something's happening on my left, I could just put this over. And then if I've got stuff over there and I want the camera to look this way, I just take it and roll it over there. Like so. Tricks. The light. I did a video on making this light. It's a black walnut slab. Actually, it might be oak. I can't even remember. And there's this little thing right here. Yes. This I hang down and my order cards are all done on index cards. And I clip that on there so that it's hanging and I can view it while I'm working. More on my order cards. I had all these, well, thousands and thousands, custom made, printed, I guess, custom printed. And this is how I do my orders. Every order goes on a card and there's the info. Uh, if you like the idea, screenshot that and have at it. Okay, the window, hold on. There's, there's one of the other cow hides. There's another one hanging over there, hanging over the kitchen. Back to the window again. Uh, when I was building the house, which took me five years by myself, of course, the delivery folks inadvertently brought an extra window one day, one window too many. I'm sure I paid for it. <laughs> Anyhow, if I'm building the place, I can do whatever I want, right? So I thought it'd be cool to have a window in the house. And maybe one day I'd redo that wall facing the living room as like a faux outdoor wall with siding and shutters and a little small tin roof and kind of make it look like a barn or a bar. Well, I never got around to those interior design aspirations, but now it's perfect because I can open and close it and see outside. And when 
Lily calls upstairs. I could take a glance out without having to walk out. So it's perfect. Look, here's the deal. I know I missed a lot in this video. So if you made it this far and have any questions at all, just put them down in the comments. I try to reply to every single question on every single video and I'll get you squared away. All you gotta do is ask. Go have fun. Props for, you know, you know what the hell they are. Uh, 